So as we look into how the Revolutionary War begins, um, let's go ahead and refer back to Paul Revere and his ride. The whole reason he and Prescott and Dawes ride to alert the Minutemen is because the are going to march on two towns in Massachusetts, Lexington and Concord, and this is in April 1875, uh, and they are actually going to take away the ammunition and the weapons that each of these towns were storing in a building um, called a magazine. And if you've ever been to Williamsburg, they have a small brick building where there is gunpowder and ammunition, and that's there to um, help the colonists defend themselves. Because um, back in the day, <clears throat> they were wanting to defend their town and defend their neighborhood, and that's where the idea of militiamen came from. So the Redcoats do march on Lexington, and um, there are Minutemen and revolutionary um, uh, Americans who are there who are going to um, take a stand and say, you cannot take away our ammunition. You cannot take away our weapons. We are going to fight for this. This is our right to have access to this. And... Um, the order was not to fire unless they were fired upon. We do not know who fired the first shot, but when the Redcoats did approach Lexington Green, um, there was a shot heard, and both sides began to fire. And that is the first battle of the American Revolutionary War, the first place of the war. Um, technically, the Americans did lose the Battle of Lexington, but uh, we always... Um, join with the Battle of Concord. And the Battle of Concord happened later on down the road um, where um, the whole time the Redcoats were on their way to Concord, um, Minutemen were fighting, hiding behind trees, and um, they stood their ground there um, in Concord, and um, the British began retreating, which means they headed back, um, and they went back all the way to Boston. So you can see from this map, you've got in there. That's where the Redcoats started. They marched on Lexington, then they kept going to Concord, and if you follow those arrows, you can see that they retreated back to Boston. Thomas Paine's Common Sense is a 47-page pamphlet full of thoughts and ideas that got people in the colonies thinking about liberty. Liberty um, as far as their, uh, the 13 colonies coming their own country. And um, a lot of the colonists didn't like the British having so much authority over them, but the idea of becoming their own country was a new and scary thought. They, they had been, you know, British citizens for as their whole lives, and their grandparents and the generations before them had come from England. So to sever or cut ties with the empire was really a, a scary thought. So Thomas' pamphlet circulated among all 13 colonies, and people started reading these ideas and going, hey, this makes sense. And um, one of the ideas was just a really bold statement. Should an island rule a continent? Think about England. It's a little island. Think about the 13 colonies. Obviously, they're not the whole continent, but they represented that huge piece of territory across the Atlantic Ocean, and they were they were in front. This brings us to the Second Continental Congress in 1776, and this, the um, delegates from all 13 colonies this time met in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in a place called Independence Hall. And if you've ever been to Philadelphia, there is a... Um, in specific building called Independence Hall, and you can go there um, and tour it. And um, this is where the Declaration of Independence was signed. 
So the Second Continental Congress, um, these delegates met together and they wrote a letter to King George III. Um, this letter had actually already been drafted because three men had been appointed to write it. They were Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin. And um, Thomas Jefferson did most of the writing um, for this letter, but um, they argued different points and King George um, Obviously, they had lots of problems, and they accused him of, of taking away their rights, and they listed those grievances, is what we call them, listed them in the letter. So they were telling King George that they were going to become their own independent country, and they would not let Britain rule them anymore. And there's the Declaration of Independence. Here they are arguing it. And think about it, these 13 colonies are no longer 13 colonies anymore. They are now America. And this is what they start calling themselves, the United States of America, um, as a new country. So this meant war with England. You can't just become your own country and expect England to say, OK, we, we understand you're now not going to be a part of us anymore. Um, so 56 men put their lives on the line by signing the Declaration of Independence. Um, when the British came, they had a list of these men, and they were, they were looking for them and tracking them down. And they would put them to death if they were found. The famous line within the Declaration of Independence is, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So obviously, we um, make George Washington the head of the Continental Arm Army. And you can see that little army is a ragtag army. Um, and the British start sending their warships across the Atlantic Ocean, full of the strongest army in the world at the time, which are the Redcoats. And they are coming to defend their country and say, no, we want you to stay a part of England. This is just a fun fact, but did you know that there is a Declaration of Independence monument in Washington, DC? And um, I never knew that, but I took a class a couple years ago, and I discovered um, it part of the class. You see the lake there on the right-hand side of the Lincoln Memorial. There's a tiny island in the middle of that lake, and on that island, there are actually monuments to the 13 colonies. There's 13 stones, and on each of the stones, um, oh, there's a little bridge that goes out to that island that you can walk on. On each of those stones have the, the men's names who signed the Declaration of Independence and the colony that they represented. And this is just a neat tribute to the men who put their lives on the line. I encourage you to take a family field trip there if you've never been there before.